Hi, welcome to Cubs and Culture for October 8th, 2018. Uh, we're up to uh, the last weekend, best picture winner of 1945. Uh, in terms of the playoffs, we're looking at a Dodger Brewer on the national side, and then Astros, and then we don't know for uh, the Yankees or the Red Sox. Um, there's got to be at least one more game. Because the Red Sox are going to win. Well, someone's going to win tonight. Uh, probably the Red Sox. Um, okay, so uh, uh, Lost Weekend is a uh, portraiture of a um, alcoholic falling apart um, over the... Uh, Don is his name. Over uh, five days. Um, the movie's un very unflinching. It's also very uncompromised. It's by this guy named Billy Wilder. His most famous film is Some Like It Hot. He also did the later uh, Best Picture winner, The Apartment. Um, it's a very good movie. Um, though I think time has made the movie a little bit more, um, campy, <laughs> um, than it was, than it would be, than it was originally, and let me just mention this right now before I bring up the clips and everything, um, uh, um, there's this musical instrument called the theremin, which is the 1950s sci-fi UFO sound, um, um, which is largely what is used. Um, it's not really used all that often in scores anymore, but in 1950 science fiction films, it was used a fuck ton. Um, this score, the Lost Weekend score, um, doesn't use it a lot, but it, make, it does make use of it um, to the point where I feel like some of the campiness is coming from the theremin. <laughs> um, 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 and while I ultimately give this movie like a 10 out of 10, I feel like parts of it are a little bit, um, um, or just overdone a little, just a little bit, um, especially because of the theremin. So let me bring up the clip. See you in a sec. Okay, so f first of all, I actually want to talk about these two other, um, films that came out about a, uh, 10 years, uh, 1936 and 1937, um, respectfully. There's these two films called, um, one's called Free for Madness, which is the far, by far the more famous one. And then there's this other film called The Cocaine Fiends. Um, 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 and they're both anti, well, they're like deer movies. Um, if, if anyone knows what they're, they're anti-drug movies. Um, and they're hilarious. Um, uh, in terms of just being badly written and badly directed and badly acted. Um, and they're all, as you can tell from the footage, they're all sort of overcooked. Um, everything like that because they're like, they got high. And so that turns them into sex maniacs and fight and everything like that. Um, uh, which is not true. Um, and everything. Um, and then for like the cocaine fiend, um, it's the a woman gets addicted to cocaine, but she's given headache powder, uh, and there's like dead rat wallpaper and everything like that. And it's just this really sort of overcooked, badly like Z grade production values um, and propaganda and everything like that. And the thing is, um, I don't know if because of my this is the sort of the opening of the cocaine fiends um i don't know because of my associations with that movie uh with those two movies or um uh, because billy wilder um is a comedic director and his sardonic acidic wit is still in the lost weekend because of um just his personnel being being so forceful now, even though it's a sort of a serious drama and it's a much much better film um uh, then the cocaine fiends or the loss uh, or weird for madness it just doesn't um, it kind of ha feels like it should be grouped together and which is a little bit unfair to the film but it's sort of sociologically interesting because I think I don't think this is a teetotaler film per se but the movie is very much again it's um I shouldn't say against, but uh, dealing with alcoholism, and it's very unflinching, and then there's quite clearly um, drinking to excess is not a good thing going to the film, obviously. Um, and so it sort of feels like it should go in with um, Reefer Madness and the Cocaine Fiends, but the thing is, we as a society treat alcoholism different than, especially way back in the day. Um, 
uh, treat alcoholism very differently from than like other drug addictions. And we treat alcohol very, very differently from like marijuana or cocaine because of sociological issues. And so it's not really, I don't really want to go too far into um, that per se, but you know, marijuana is associated with um, Mexican laborers and cocaine is um, associated with um, African Americans. Um, and they're treated far, especially in the 40s and um, 30s and 40s, far worse, far worse than alcohol um, because of that. And so there's some uh, alcohol then that um, those two drugs are treated far worse because of the racial component of them in class and everything like that um, than alcohol. And so there's some, there's a very weird thing where uh, The Lost Weekend is like, like it was this critically acclaimed film and it won Best Picture because it's dealing with alcoholism and it's treated very respectfully. Whereas um, for you know, Reaper Madness and uh, the Cocaine Fiends, um, they, they, you know, there was E grade productions, and they they're far more exploitation and sensationalist. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why I feel like uh, the Lost Weekend is kind of campy to me because I kind of put them in the same bucket as those other two films. In any case, um, uh, this is the trailer for Lost Weekend, and it's a deeply um, entertaining film. And the best um, part of it and what we're going to mostly focus on is the film does a really good job of placing you in the subjective consciousness of an alcoholic at least how um uh, at least as much as what anyone possibly can and of course the experience is not universal um and so a lot of that's in visual direction and just sort of you know, for lack of a better term some of the gags in the script um Ray Millard, who plays um, Don, um, gives a very good performance. Um, again, a little bit like the movie as a whole. I feel like it, it's a little bit overdone um, and a little bit over the top. Um, uh, because, again, I think the movie is trying to be expressive. It's a, a realistic is not really the correct word for this film. Because I don't think it's trying to be a realistic um, representation of alcoholism. I think it's trying to be expressive, expressive as um, being expressive of what the subjective feeling is. And in that way, I think the movie's far better because I don't really think um, the movie's all that accurate to the um, um, science of addiction because one, it was made in the 1940s. Um, and two, it's very much shaped like a story. Okay, so this is one of the first uh, bits and it's probably the most famous um, bit in the movie because if you'll notice down in the bottom, there's a um, bottle of whiskey rye hanging out the window. Um, and Don is the man packing and he's gonna very, not subtly, but very casually look over. And I really, and so this is, so this is a brilliant shot because you know immediately the dynamics of the story. Alcoholic wants liquor. <laughs> and that's how it sets up. Okay, so now this scene um, is really sort of important structurally because um, Don, if, the, if Don, the character, was just a drunk and he drank all, you know, it's just... You have to care somewhat about Don, so you care that he's sort of destroying himself. And um, Miller here is very, very charming um, and very, very sort of humorous and sardonic um, by saying, uh, you know, we should get married to the bartender. And then also he has sort of a self-awareness here and that he'll call this um, his vicious circle. And then also how he flips that cigarette around is he tr keeps trying to light it on the wrong end. That's a gag that goes throughout the entire movie and it gives a little bit of a um, great sort of characterization to him as he seems, you know, distracted um, as if even lighting a cigarette's too much for him unless he's drinking, um, which is all much more powerful it could be and then the other sort of thing is this is him talking about the circle how circles are the perfect geometric um um figure because again alcoholism this is a bender he's going on and he's talking about it in that way so again it's not just um 
him being an alcoholic. It's, it's this character is charming and engaging and human, which makes his alcoholism sadder and more powerful. And then also again, somewhat like the humor in this story, um, this bit over here is about him how he's going to sneak his alcoholic, um, his alcohol, his rye, past his brother. Is his brothers, you know. Stop it. He's sick of him being an alcoholic and they're trying to get him to be sober, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and it's kind of funny in that, like, he's he's smart enough to think, like, oh, I'll, I'll let him find one is that will make him feel better because he knows I'm going to try. Once he find the, finds the one, he'll think, oh, I found it. <laughs> I don't need to worry. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and again, that's, again, that makes Don seem clever. And everything like that. Um, and then the other sort of thing, this bartender uh, seems very much against, like, Don being drinking so much. And I think there's a great sort of commentary there in that um, alcoholism as a cult, as us as a culture, doesn't deal with it well because of the financial, how much money we have invested in this. Um, this is probably my favorite moment in the film in terms of acting because of a millet here he's so um charming and everything like that and this is but this is what i mean where he sort of maybe goes a bit too far in that this is a very animated um performance uh of course wilder kind of directed him to do it like this as well um where it works and there's a great sort of like theatricality to this which again reminds me of like a good version of the acting in the cocaine fiends and reefer madness because that stuff is just hysterically over the top so there's again there's some there's 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 a weird sort of entertainment value in this performance because he's acting the hell out of it here um and <laughs> It's just sort of interesting in that regard. I also think of the circle, circles of symbolism, then it cuts to his girlfriend because it's just a vicious circle. It's a really cool motif. And then this scene um, is probably the best sort of direction in the film because it's basically two shots. A point of view shot of Don, um, how the liquor is looking at Don, and then a point of view from Don, how he's looking at the liquor. And there, if you follow this closely, it's done well enough. Um, you don't necessarily see it all the time, um, but it's pretty much the case that in um, dead center of the shot, both left and right and up and down, there's always, always um alcohol in the dead center and you don't and here's the thing because of the way in which this scene is edited together it feels very much like almost like a dance between don and um and i guess champagne here um and again because he's had an opera you should be he should be paying attention to the music and he's not hearing a damn note he's just following the liquor um, and again, I don't know per se if this is utterly realistic in terms of how people would actually behave, but it really gives a great subjective um, feeling of uh, what it means to be addicted um, uh, and everything like that. And it goes even one step further here in, it, uh, in, in that in a couple of seconds you'll see a dancing line um, see what I mean? How the liquor keeps recentering itself in the center of the frame. Yeah, okay, so this is the line I'm talking about. It's going to be right here in like a couple of seconds. Um, they're going to end up dancing. And I'm sure what they're, they're, I'm sure what they're singing about is uh, connected to drinking. And it's like a drinking song. <laughs> This is the shot, and it's gonna. So he ha he's at the opera, and he has uh, Raleigh in his coat, and so of course it turns into a coat, and he just sort of zooms in, and it's that like that's a good sort of metaphor or a good way of getting us into the subjective headspace of an alcoholic, but it seems to imply because 
eventually he goes into like an alcoholic door or whatever, and he's literally seeing that, and I don't think that happens like that. Um, so it's really sort of hard to do do this. And this is where, again, where some of the camp value comes, because it's a little bit unclear. <sighs> If if Wilder as the director is trying to make us feel like we're the alcoholic, or if Don is literally having these hallucinations, and the place where this um, goes a little bit too far, it's been, uh, very much too far, um, and this is probably the weakest scene in the film. Um, it's right here. He's only he's, he's been he, he's been in the drunk tank. Uh, drunk tank. He's just stolen that bottle. He's drinking, and it's going to turn to night. Uh, because he, he passes, he gets passed out drunk, and he wakes up and he has an alcohol delirium um, situation. Now, as far as I understand it, alcohol delirium happens. Excuse me, not because you drink too much, because you have you 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 drink. You're an alcoholic and you've been drinking a shit ton, and then it happens when you go into withdrawal. Um, but withdrawal doesn't happen. Um, for a few days, um, so he should like so medically he shouldn't be having this um, delusion, and because you it's supposed to be a delirium episode. The stuff of the coat, which I think is better interpreted as express of expressing the subjective feeling as opposed to him actually having an hallucination, um, gets caught up in this. Um, is this scene with the bat and the mouse, and it's really. Like in the context of the movie, it works, but with the theremin and the fact that the bat is quite fake looking, um, and the mouse somewhat, though I'm pretty sure the mouse is um, real, it just doesn't. It comes across, <laughs> it becomes across as a little bit too darkly funny, as opposed to it being a horrifying situation because this man is falling apart. Um, so ultimately, I do really, really like this film. Um, I think it's aged in a very interesting way because of the relationship the process that the culture has had around like pawn and ca um, cocaine and other drugs and on alcohol because of uh, representations of drug addiction. Uh, so in any case, this is The Lost Weekend. Um, have a good night. Uh, Cubs and Culture out.